they look what happens in the future what is the a barrel of crude oil worth a barrel of crude oil today may be under than seven on nymex or on ice mm. you know in london but the point is that it may be worth if we really know the value of that crude oil it may be worth a thousand dollars now should we just allow someone to just come and take as much as possible and sell simply because we need to we need to satisfy an urge something that has become like an addiction to cocaine okay because some commissioners of finance are coming in next week perhaps to come and collect some more of this crude oil money to go and spend in their state after which they will be back next month so it is not africa's time you know unfortunately okay please feel free again. except of course like i said the philosophical underpinning we want someone who will say look we are tired as nigerians we go abroad in some of the airport they bring a dog to come and sniff to sniff us as we're coming out of the plane and we have to say we're tired of that we have to say we're tired of being treated as criminals until proven innocent in in our business transactions in, in my book i i mentioned some of the 419 problems that you know we have i published about three of the letters i get like 10 of them every every day you know i publish some of them you know and they say look, in in international banking today there's what is called the Nigerian fraud. When they, when they recruit you in UBS Bank or in Citibank or whatever abroad, they will take you to an orientation and they'll show you oh, the Nigerian fraud. fraud. Yes. Okay, we have become the bastions of corruption, the bastions of fraud. The next question is, is corruption in Africa or Nigeria? Okay, corruption in Africa, is it overblown? Mm. It is overblown, indeed. I think it is overblown. Because if you that's what I'm saying. Part, the so African countries are very exactly. Corrupt. Who who is more corrupt? Well, I, I I think I'll wager. I'll wager that those people who say we are corrupt are even even more corrupt than we are. But they have done the baggage of the corruption on us. One, two, you know, the the the, the, the lodestone of corruption hanging around our neck and making us believe that we cannot achieve anything except we get rid of corruption. In 1927, Namdi Azikwe, the first president of Nigeria, was in West Pennsylvania as a student. He, he dropped out of school for a while, and he wanted to commit suicide. He, lied, he went and lied down at, at the rail track waiting for a train. Just before the train hit him, one person pulled him out of the place. And later on, he went and worked in the deepest coal mines of West Pennsylvania for six weeks. After working for six weeks, he came out to the janitor to collect his money and found out that he was shortchanged by $200 or for, by some amount. He said, look, give me that calculator and I will show you that you are a cheat. And that man told him and said, look, you called him the N-word. I won't say it here. You know, call you N-word. Okay. If you don't take this money and get out of here, we're going to have a necklace party in the night. Because the guy was probably a member of the KKK and we said he was going to lynch this guy if he doesn't take the money. And Namdi Azikwe insisted and collected his, his money. It's in page 107 of his book, I remember. It's uh, his, uh, his autobiography. Okay. You know, he insisted and collected his money. Got funded and funded and $18.95, if I remember. Funded and $28 to $0.95. Cent, instead of the two twenty eight that the man wanted to pay him. And immediately, he made sure he ran out of that town that night. Now tell me, 1927 to date, 90-something years down the line, 94 years down the line, how come me, an indirect descendant of Nandi Azikiwe, who was as straight as a rod in 1927, have become the symbol of corruption anywhere I go? And the, the descendants of that man who was cheating every black laborer that worked in that time have become the one to pontificate to us about corruption. But because we have allowed our, our, ourselves to wear the lodestone of corruption around our neck, we have allowed ourselves to be ab so abused. And uh, like I said, we want a leader that can articulate the philosophical underpinning. We want a leader that can chat for us and say, look, this is where we're going. This is the thinking. These are the problems we have. Not a leader that will just talk in terms of more roads, more NEPA, and all those kind of things. We have, our problem has unfortunately metastasized far, far beyond the issue of road, water, and all. Of course, those ones are basic. Those things that we should take for granted. Okay? Uh, people in the Middle East are writing today. They don't know what we're going through here. Many of those people who are writing in the Middle East today, if they were living here, then they don't know what real suffering means. You, I take it some places in Abuja here today. If you see the conditions under which people are living, it's, 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 it's totally appalling. A lot of them will wake up there. They come to town and work for their bosses every morning. They go through a lot of stress. It costs maybe about seven, six hundred, seven hundred naira to come from Sulija to town to come and work every day, and the person is earning how much? Earning twenty thousand or twenty-five thousand, or, or even fifteen thousand. People don't even care anymore. We have a society that's just on a railroad 
to to know we're on a rat race and we forget that even if you win a rat race you're still a rat <laughs> okay let me take uh, the comments we're getting from uh, our viewers uh leroy Ajie is saying nigeria's uh, problems are great okay nigeria's great problems to be solved are corruption and power of which all other sectors suffer from say telecoms in nigeria who is checking them uh where you, when you apply for color tunes and your money is taken, yet service is not rendered and so much of that. Sounds little but can wreck the society. Okay, this is coming from another viewer saying, millions long for immortality who do not know what to do with themselves on a rainy Sunday afternoon, says Susan Entz. I think Nigerians need more of financial information and education now than before. Nancy, you're doing a good job. Thank you very much. Okay. This is also coming from another viewer. His name is George. I agree with the guest because when you focus or divert much resources on one particular trend, then you are definitely calling everybody's attention. Like that of football. Go to any field now, you will see the youth there whiling or wasting away. All is because of the big pay. And he said engineers in the banking industry. That's so true. All right. Just keep them coming and I will read them as soon as I get them <laughs> that's the new age of uh, you know yeah and now you get the, the feed uh, on a live uh, basis it's fantastic yeah thank you very much now what do we do what do we do because we just have uh, what do we do in my view yes for a few minutes um, I, I think like I said you see we need we need uh, it's difficult to say I and mean, when I say philosophical this and that I mean it tends to be fuddle with the problem uh, or the solution but I, I think that we need deeper people the deep calls to the deep. We need people who, who know really what the problems are, not knee-jerk reactions. We don't want people who just wake up in the middle of nowhere. And indeed, I think what we can also do is this book. You can search for it. It's called Crushed. You know, it's like, I, I wonder we'll, we'll, make it, we'll, make it, we'll make it. I wonder we'll make it. Yeah, yeah, very quickly, it's not that. You know, it's just an acronym for the things that I think we should do uh, to, to get out of where we are. C stands for we should go after anti-corruption. You know, we should do anti-corruption, which is good. Let's limit it as so much. But we should also... Uh, well, yes. The FCC style does work, you know, but I think that we should also reject the toga. We should just not sit down and allow someone to just talk down on us and say, you guys are corrupt. Oh, sorry, sir. We're sorry we are corrupt. No, it doesn't work that way, you know. Now, that's the C stands for anti-corruption, stands for let's look at the Chinese model. But if not for anything, let's take that model on savings. If we could uh, uh, encourage the people to save, not to say, oh, go to the microfinance bank and borrow money to live uh, a, just a better life. No, save money. Live within your means, okay? That's very, 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 very critical because in the West now, they're not, they don't even have that. And not okay? live outside your means to impress people normally exactly. you don't like. Exactly, you don't like, you know? Exactly, to buy what you don't no, want. Yes, you know? exactly. C stands for we need to tweak our culture because the culture, we've got to, we got to, uh, an overhang with our culture, okay? That's very, very critical, you know? Our stance for we need to be realistic in what we, want, what, we did, what we want to achieve. We need to be reasonable as to what we want to achieve. Nobody could say, oh, like you have just said now, I'm sorry to say, you know, is it Africa's time? No, let's not think about whose time it is. Let's think about moving from point A to point B. Let's not think about that time when the African man or the black man will come and rule the world. Well, we said that we're, we're gallivanting and no, I, the I, rest I, of them, not I, you, I, not I you, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going about no, you. No, Mr. Uh, Fosha, hold on a second. Yes, I, I, I'm I, sorry. I, no, I yeah. didn't mean that when I said it was... I know, I know that's not what you What I meant yeah. was, is Africa coming to the forefront right now of global recognition Fine. with its resources, exactly. I get with you, I get its your manpower. Point. You know, that's what it, I'm saying, with its population. Fantastic, fantastic. I get you. I mean, I copy you. Absolutely, verbatim. Uh, but many people also think about the day that the black man is going to come and rule the world. We need to be self-effacing. It's a, it's a stoop to conquer world. If you don't stoop, you can't conquer. If you make yourself too, you know, people in the world of global politics, they bring it down. You know, that's the way it works. U stands for unity, okay? Of course, I also stand for being responsible, claiming responsibility for our actions Action. and inactions. But we like to pass the buck too much, including we, the followers. It's not just that no leader is bionic and super superhuman who will come and solve all the problems u is for unity we must uh, well without uni without unity we are finished s is for strategy do we have a roadmap do we have a strategy do we know where we want to get to who is thinking strategy no we don't Even we're not we talking about financial strategy. sector sector strategy, or FSS strategy. Uh, you, no 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 i mean that's financial sector Look, in fact it feel itself is a misnomer because the, with 150 million people to feed you cannot go and hand that on financial markets 
And it's also another problem, and it also underlies what I said earlier about the misallocation of resources. Everybody wants to be a banker. Therefore, even at the national level, we're looking at the financial sector instead of the industrial sector. Where is the industrial With sector vision? Exactly. So where is the industrial okay. sector vision? Now, before I quickly go, okay. H is for history. We need to go back to our history. If you don't know where you're coming from, you can't know where you're going. And our history has been written on our behalf by the victors. Therefore, we need to rewrite our history. Who are we? Okay, we need to understand. We don't even have our contemporary. I mentioned Namdi Azikwe now. Most 20 years old in Nigeria don't care who Namdi Azikwe is. I watch the TV stations, not AIT sometimes, and some have this section and they say, oh, oh, 1905, this is the year that J. Edgar Hoover died or was born. I'm like, what's my business with J. Edgar Hoover? Are we saying that we don't have ancestors? Okay, we don't have leaders. Why are we studying Abraham Lincoln when we could have been studying Tafar Balewa, uh, Savannah of Sokoto, uh, Arulowo, and the rest of them? Okay, so you know, now H is for history, H, H is for hard work, H is for humility. We should be proud enough to defend our country and say, don't come and take us for granted, but we should be humble enough to stoop to conquer. E is for education. Our education now is not geared to make people, like I said before, we get engineers out of school and they go into the service sector. Education should be such that it's tuned towards lifting our economy. And this is a democracy, but to ensure that the democracy does not kill us. Our democracy is presently too expensive, and it should be made much cheaper. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Fasho. I, I, I have to um, halt you at this point. I hope You're that welcome, one of these Anna. days before you travel, you travel again out yeah. of the shores, you'll come back. But let me read a few comments before I go. Okay, Jagada and Jimo is saying, I totally agree with your guest. The money paid to footballers is too much. Why is everyone talking about the footballers? Okay. I agree with Stockman Fasho. Our leaders should face the real problems. Uh, example, job uh, creation. Um, Umoro Sanuno is saying, I agree with the guest completely. Okay, please, I need your email for constructive debate. Our leaders are psychophants and not in tune with reality. Akiola Olushola is saying, Africa, especially Nigeria, is not there until we get rid of this human disaster, corruption we are, that we're experiencing in this part of the world. A lot of people are agreeing with you uh, on the program uh, today. Even if you win a rat race, you're still a rat. Okay, just like the guest said, regarding overpaid footballers, I would love to have your book, sir. That's at that. Okay. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I would say that Tokma well, is no, now no, the no. newest author in town with everything he's been saying on the show. He's been able to put that yeah. in a book. And I must say, it's, it's quite a good book. I've started reading it. You it's gave it to me how many days ago? It's a Bible, isn't mm -hmm. it? Okay. So I think, okay, lastly, this is coming from Kings is saying, Nancy, I'm enjoying your show big time. Okay, thumbs up to your guest, Tokma Fashua. Please invite him more on the show to enlighten Nigerians as we are all blindfolded by our corrupt leaders. That's the much we can take. I think you should invite that guy that just said you should invite me more. <laughs> but I think <laughs> I've tried my best in this, uh, this thing coming here so frequently. To, to, to but we need more people to come to, and to, give to, perspective. To and perspective. We need courage. I, I, mentioned, I forgot to mention, C stand, the number one that C stands for is courage. You're not going to make an omelette without breaking eggs. We need to be courageous as a people so and not be cowed. Yeah, take a stand take and, a stand. and say this is what we want. All right, thank you very much. If I leave you, you go on and on. Yes. I've been speaking with Tokma Fashua, the CEO at Global Analytics, is also an author as well as an economist. Thank you for joining us again uh, today. Please join us again tomorrow for another edition of the program. I am Nancy Lo and AIT reports straight ahead. Stay tuned. <laughs>